pleasure to introduce Professor Guichen Chen from Northwestern University. And he's going to be talking to us today about some recent methods for partial differential equations of divergence form. Oh, well, thank you very much. Is that the work? So, yeah, it's fine. Uh, uh, okay, so it's really my great pleasure and uh, honor uh, to be here to participate in this uh, very special event of IMPA. Actually, I have been in IMPA for many times. Every time I was here, I always get some new ideas for my research project. So somehow, uh, I regard uh, IMPA as uh, uh, my second home institution. <laughs> okay. Uh, besides myself, actually, many people uh, of Northwestern University uh, have visited IMPA very frequently, uh, have benefited from uh, various acti uh, activities in IMPA. So they ask me to also send the best wish and congratulations to IMPA. Well, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so in this talk, uh, so I said block something here. Okay, the from the pan. <laughs> okay, so in this talk, uh, I I wish to uh, present some aspect of some listening uh, nonlinear methods for solve a nonlinear partial differential equation of diverging form and the related nonlinear uh, problems. So some of the materials uh, I'm going to present it are from joint work uh, with uh, Michelle Fieldman of the University of uh, Wisconsin Medicine and uh, Hermano Fred, actually our local people here, and uh, uh, Benoit uh, Patan, uh, Actually he, actually, he will going to talk about, uh, give a lecture tomorrow for that. So several preprints and the preprints are available in, at my home page. Actually, some more will be available in one week or so. Something. Okay, so uh, now in a partial differential equation of diverging form uh, can be write down in the following form. Uh, here, A, B, those are nonlinear mapping. Uh, U here is Rm, and I, I'm considering this uh, Y in Rn. So this is a system uh, of nonlinear differential equation with M actually equations. Okay? Uh, although the, the form is very simple, it uh, can be written easily, but many, most impo uh, many important nonlinear partial differential equations arising from uh, <coughs> Many, uh, uh, many areas of mathematics and the various science, such as physics, chemistry, mechanics, engineering science, and, and uh, other areas, uh, can be written down in this form uh, and its variance. Uh, three of the most important classes of such p partial differential equation uh, on which I'm going to focus on uh, as follows. The first class of differential equation uh, actually is the hyperbolic system of conservation law, uh, which introduced by Constant Duffermos yesterday. Uh, in this case, of course, in my notation, y will be t and x right now in this form. Okay? Now, the second class of the is uh, about the degenerate parabolic and hyperbolic equations. Okay, I write it down this form. In certain physical situations, uh, diffusion terms are important, okay, besides uh, convection terms for that. Although those diffusion terms usually actually they are degenerate. Okay? We cannot expect a uniform uh, uh, parabolic. Now, so the class I'm going to actually discuss about the seeking out the partial differential equation of hyperbolic and the elliptic mixed type. Okay, so form actually I take this form. Now, equation of this uh, for this equation, 
uh, at a certain phase, uh, for them certain phase plane, uh, this equation is like a hyperbolic, like nonlinear wave equation. Uh, at a, so other places, somehow this equation is nonlinear elliptic, some uh, mixed type for that. Uh, okay. Uh, now the main difficulties for solving those equations uh, include the following. Uh, the first is the discontinuity. Uh, no matter how small uh, initial data and, and the boundary data, uh, solution generally develops singularity in finite time or certain uh, neighborhood. Okay. So, uh, we somehow we cannot expect uh, solution keep the same con smoothness for that. So in general, we are looking for solution we call the entropy solution as the constant that almost introduced yesterday. Uh, mean the first set of weak solution, definition of weak solution, then we need the entropy condition to single out the a uh, physical unique solution. Okay. Now, for weak solutions here, uh, if we allow solution contain some discontinuities, for example, discontinuous surface here, uh, then this surface and the solution should satisfy uh, ranking Hogenio conditions. It's easy to check. Okay, just choose test function, then you can find that. Now. Now, there is a well established Wendy uh, theorem, BV theorem, uh, started with the fundamental work of Jim Glim in 1965, and then with other contributions like Glim Lux, Liu, Daphomus de Pena, recently Biakini, Brizan, and Liu Yang, and Lafleur, and many others. Uh, one of the uh, theorem uh, is the following, it can be stated as following. Any solution uh, as obtained from the Glim scheme, uh, the or from check method, or vanish viscosity method, all uh, has certain additional uh, regularity. Okay, some information. Then those solutions actually are unique and stable. Okay. Now, beauty of this theorem is that the some uh, the small somehow the smallest. Uh, smallest assumption of solution uh, is optimal. Okay, so if we allow a solution, a solutions have large oscillation, then actually in general solution may not, I mean, no longer belong to the uh, BV space due to phenomena like concentration, cavitation, and other phenomena. Now, for multi-dimension case, uh, situation is more complicated. For example, focusing phenomena, defocusing phenomena, and uh, inter interaction, uh, interaction between those waves and the boundary are more complex. Okay. Uh, so situation much more complicated for that. Okay. Now, uh, the, actually the several methods I'm going to uh, present actually will be helpful to handle some of those difficulties, basically. Uh, now, the first method I try to discuss is actually trying to first discuss the uh, theory of diverging measure like the field for entropy method. Okay. Uh, the probably the most simplest equation, partial differential equation, is transport, transport equation, which takes this. Is a, very simple form. Here, uh, usually lowest density V is velocity for them. Now, if V is a constant, then we give initial density, for example, like that, as a result of those mass. Now, if V is a constant, then just uh, those mass transport along characteristics from T equals zero to T bigger than zero. Okay? Now, if V is not a constant, it's a function of T and X. Uh, then what do we find? Well, in general, this loop could be very complicated. For example, you 
can allow discontinuities, then could there be concentration and so forth. Okay? So low in general in, in the space of major space or could be infinity or so sometimes BV for that. Now uh, for in many physical situations, of course, this V is not a given function. Okay? Uh, v is governed by other uh, partial differential equations. For example, in fluid dynamics, uh, this V is governed by the conservation of momentum, which takes this form. I write it down here. Okay. I wrote it down here. So now this unknown function rho and v is then two equations from a system of equation for rho and v. Uh, now, first we consider a very simple case. For example, this, this p rho, p0 rho is a pleasure, okay? So if we pick a p0 identity equals zero, which is the case uh, uh, modeling some flow uh, created by stick particle as called by Yang Bolin and Sinai. Uh, now, if we consider a very simple Cauchy problem, we call Riemann problem, uh, at the t equals zero, we give just constant here, rho minus v minus, this is constant rho plus v plus. Then you can find a unique solution. Uh, this solution, actually, for density, this solution was formed along this is when the density concentration on this line. Characteristic, this is actually the measure. Okay, v is just a jump function from left to right for that. Okay, in your case. So, uh, so even very simple, very, those equations are very simple, but uh, we cannot avoid uh, the concentration for that. Now, if we want to think a little bit more, for uh, isentropic Euler equation, for example, for the gamma law case, okay, uh, as mentioned, uh, I constant from yesterday. Now, for this case, if I make a coordinate transformation, this is in Orion coordinate, I make a transformation to Lagrange coordinate, then this tau is basically, for gas time, and this is the specific volume. Under this transformation, then this equation can be transformed into the, this equation. Okay? Now, for the first equation, we can also similarly, we can solve the Riemann problem for that. Uh, like I did the, in the previous case, then we can easily find the source initial data and uh, we have rarefaction wave, two rarefaction waves, and now between two rarefaction waves, this is a vacuum state, okay? Uh, although initial data, this initial density is actually uh, uh, away from vacuum. Now, under this transformation, then the new coordinate then we find this tau actually is a major solution, okay? A tau basically from here, this vacuum, you can read here tau is a delta mass concentration on this line for that, okay? Uh, actually, there's an uh, existing theorem by various also, uh, like dependent thing, Lou, myself, Liu, Leon's Patam, Tedmore, and the Leon's Patam, Soganidis for gamma law case. Uh, listen to John with Lafleur. Uh, we, uh, we are able to prove global reasons for general pleasure case, pleasure law case. Okay, so those, equation, those equations are very simple. Uh, the point is, actually, solution in general, those solutions are no longer in the space of function. Okay. Uh, so this is somehow um, uh, a piece of bad news because the traditional theory of partial differential equation trying actually handle solution in the space of functions. But those equations are so simple and uh, the phenomenon is very simple and uh, it's physical for that. Now, uh, so uh, listing the theory of the actually the diverging major, diverging major field and you can some way can risk you something about those difficulties. Okay. Anyway, so and those equations uh, fit into the general framework of hyperbolic system of conservation laws, okay, which take this form. Uh, now, hyperbolicity means 
this is a matrices. So you're giving any cosine in this unit vector here. Then you can write it down from this flux function. You can write it down. This one is n by n matrices. So this n by n matrix have, has uh, uh, only layer eigenvalues. Okay? And we call those kind of system of uh, hyperbolic. Okay? Now, a valuable uh, existing, existing theorem tells us actually solution in this class we call entropy solution. So solution as a in the space of measure space or LP so or BV satisfy uh, this entropy inequality. So this is a differential inequality okay, in the sense of distribution. For those entropy which convex and uh, determined by those uh, uh, linear hyperbolic equations. Okay. Now, the nature of physical uh, mathematical question is, suppose we have a solution in this class. Okay. Uh, what kind of information we can get from, uh, for those solutions? That is, we want to know so the solution behaviors. Okay. Uh, to, in order to get the solution behaviors, we know that uh, the choice of solution or choice of entry of entry of flat, uh, those choices are essential, right? We cannot avoid that. Uh, now, solution in this space, well, basically does not tell us uh, too much information. Basic information from this entry of inequality, okay? Uh, well, we want to, really we want to use this entry of inequality. Well, as usual, the first step, of course, we want to start from this inequality, uh, the basis in first uh, uh, operation of the integration by part. Whether we can do it from the here to integration by part. In the value general, for example, those eta could be a measure, whether we can do it. Then the second, we can, whether we can define a choice of those vector field. Then after that, of course, we want to start from there, we want to study various properties of solutions. Now, how to handle that? Well, we know that for any function in those space, except BV, of course, we can define trees, but in those space, we cannot define trees. So this entry of inequality actually gives us additional information, which this basically means this um, distribution. But this distribu distribution has sign. So the Schwarz lemma tells us this distribution actually is a measure. Okay? So this is additional information. What means that? This, which means that now eta Q as vector field, we play divergence, this divergence is a measure. So the question whether we can use this information to get various uh, uh, properties, uh, we can, whether we can do it for that, okay? For the integration by parts and trees and so forth. Okay, now in general we, we can formulate the, in the following form. Well, this is a set which consists of those vector fields in the measure space from D, D in R in, actually here, D in R in, uh, okay. and such that this if and the diverging if is a measure, okay? Then the next uh, set of vector field, we can write it down in this form, this is LP vector field, and under this LP norm plus measure norm finite. So it's easy to check those spaces are Banaha space under uh, those norms. Okay, it's very easy to check for that. Okay? Now those spaces, actually this space is bigger than this space. Okay, this is the DMP space. This space is bigger than BV space. And uh, we know that the BV space is bigger than Sobolev space and C1 space and so forth. Okay? Uh, now we know that in, in those spaces, we can define choices and the gauss boling formula, product law, and various properties there. So the nature of question is whether we can do the same for vectors in those spaces, okay? Uh, listen, well, we know that in the 50s of last century, the establishment of the gauss boling formula in the for BV function by the George and the Federal has made this space very useful in partial differential equation, calculus evaluation, and differential geometry, and so forth. 
So we could ask the same question for that. Well, after the first look, it's the same, not true, well, because there's a Whitney example. Whitney example follows. Well, we just two dimension vector. You write it down. Uh, this is y1 here, y2 here. Okay. Right. Now this belongs to dm1. Okay. Also easy check in this domain. This is diverging if identity equals zero. So this vector is uh, belongs to dm1. Now if you write it down because it's inside of diverging here, that this identity equals zero. Of course, this integral equals zero. Now you integrate along this uh, boundary. You got this pi. Okay, so what it means, the classical sense of choice does not work for that because it's a violate to this uh, integration by path, okay, Gauss-Green formula. Okay, now the second example, uh, those vector could be very complicated. For example, this is a measure, one dimension measure, lambda measure, then I put this y to y1, this diverging equals zero, this belongs to uh, the DM extension space. Of course, we know that each one we cannot define trees, right? It's because measure, mu, and there's no definition of trees for that. Now, uh, there was some efforts that have been done actually around the 1983 and 87 by Angus Lodi. He first think, considered the uh, if in L infinitive and in the very abstract way, introduced some way to introduce the trees for that. Now, the Zimmer, he considered somehow related the problem. Uh, he think working the, this uh, vector field in this space, somehow the integration by path can uh, work out for that. And uh, then a little later, uh, various people, I didn't write it down here, the one of the large religious, he considered the case if belong to DM2. Uh, his motiv motivation from the problem, special problem from the uh, finite element method, you need the integration by path for that. So in some cases, he did that. Okay. Now those cases, of course, try to exclude the well, classical uh, examples for that. Okay, now, recently uh, 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 I joined with the uh, 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 command of red uh, actually motivated various problems from con uh, nonlinear conservation laws, and uh, we made a systematic study for those uh, fields. Okay, one of our theorem is following. Uh, now, if if belong to this space, then for any uh, domain omega is compared in this uh, set with Lipschitz boundaries then there exists functional uh, over this due space of leap, leap of this space, and such that we can do integration by path for that, okay? And this uh, functional. The second, if now if belong to DMP for P between one and infinity, then this actually functional is much better. We can actually do space of C, uh, this space with subleaf uh, intersect with some wave space for that. Okay. Now, if this belongs to inf uh, it belongs to infinity, then this is actually the function. Okay, the function is actually an infinity function. Okay. So this mu actually I would say is a unit normal here. Uh, I didn't mention here before, and you can write it down for that. Now, in this theorem, maybe you will you will say, well, what is this? What is about this function? It's so abstract. Right for that. So we have another theorem for that is uh, <coughs> actually to compute those traits. Suppose uh, we have we want to looking for the trees along those Lipschitz boundaries. Then this trees can be computed in the following form. Uh, basically, these trees you can write down in this form as a final, and with this one. Now this you're giving phi along the, this uh, Lipschitz boundary, then we use the Witten extension, we can extend this function globally, okay? Then uh, this uh, trace actually can be computed as the limit of those uh, Lipschitz deformation. Uh, 
this uh, weakened extension and h is the level set of function of those uh, boundaries, Lipschitz deformations. Okay? Uh, it's very specific. You give it deformation, you can com compute it. Also, the, our previous theorem ensures that this uh, uh, choice is unique. So you just find some Lipschitz deformation, then you compute it, you can get that. Okay? The rigorous can, it's very easy to compute for, and uh, useful for applications. Now, uh, for if belong to this DM infinitive, this is actually this one can be computed as a weak star limit of those trees along the, we can define those trees almost all those, every, almost all, all those deformation curves, we can define those trees, then you take a limit okay, in the, uh, this topology. There's an example to show that the topology of this limit, the weak star topology is optimal. We cannot improve uh, strong topology in sense to converging for that. Okay, so this is just, I'll show you just some examples how, some property of those fields, and there are um, actually more properties for those fields. Okay, uh, now also we apply those uh, properties to sort of try and solve various problems in conservation. Well, for example, we prove the decay of periodic entropy solution as t goes to infinity for certain classes. Also, asymptotic stability of entropy solution LP. And also solve some vacuum problem, like I showed you an example for that, stability of vacuum problem. Also, uh, initial boundary value problem for those uh, entropy solutions which are discontinuous. Right? So, uh, choice we introduced, uh, we introduced the definition of notion of choice we introduced is very natural to define for initial boundary value problems. Uh, leading, suppose we have data here, how to, def how to make, well, in which sense solution uh, we assume those data. Well, main idea is you try to use Lipschitz deformation and you get uh, uh, and all Lipschitz deformation, you take a limit and choice uh, will whether the solution assumes those uh, uh, values for that. Okay, now those uh, methods can also uh, be applied, naturally applied to the degenerate parabolic hyperbolic equations. Okay, for example, I write it down in this form here. This is a matrices, a uh, non negative matrices, symmetry. This uh, is uh, uh, always can. We can make, make this symmetric. So if in the version of entropy solution, we have entropy inequality for those function, means that you take any entropy, you write it down, multiply it applying both sides, then you get this stuff. And we then right hand, hand side, you can write it down that. Now since we assume this entropy is convex, now this is a quadratic form, this non-negative matrices, this uh, has sign, okay? So when we, after we just throw away this term, then you got a uh, similar entropy in quality as uh, I show, show you in a few minutes ago. Uh, then those vector field as your diverging measure vector field, then we can still can apply uh, those uh, theorems to, uh, to study property of solutions for that. As you listen to the Homano Fred and his co-authors, I uh, use this idea to consider some free boundary problem really, various things for those kind of equations. So this idea basically, uh, the idea so for entropy method basically microscope uh, ideas. Uh, we started from this microscope uh, uh, variables entropy and the entropy flux uh, and so forth, so then we try to evaluate general framework whether we can do integration by parts and the various things, okay, basic part for that. Now, in some case, uh, more information about this, this measure as well as the entropy, entropy flux would be very useful for solve some various problems, okay. So, uh, so this is the, the one of idea of called kinetic method, okay. Kinetic method, uh, try, uh, this basically uh, is trying to explore more information about those uh, measure as well as entropy by introduce uh, some additional variable we call 
microscopic viscosity for them for that. Then trying to describe some information about that. Uh, so analytic uh, uh, efforts start actually for hyperbolic is uh, by Ben Patam Tedmo and the Lyons Patam Tedmo and uh, listen to actually uh, if you want to uh, know more you can uh, consult the Patama lecture notes listening about the hyperbolic level various uh, those methods. Now in this talk I basically trying to uh, give you some illustration how I uh, use kinetic method to uh, to solve some problem for uh, degenerate parabolic hyperbolic equations. <clears throat> okay, so here's an equation here. Uh, I related that. For now, we since this non non negative this uh, matrix, we can write it down in this form. Uh, this basically related with the length. Now, if we assume the Lipschitz and this is just bounded function. Uh, now, for a this identity equals zero. This is hyperbolic case is well known. There's a general theorem about BV infinity or even L1, uh, as mentioned by Constant Famous yes, yesterday. Uh, now, for F equals zero, uh, this is basically the general parabolic equation. There are a lot of paper about that. Basically, they're trying to use parabolic technique to uh, understand the solution uh, of this uh, the general parabolic equations. Uh, so, for example, existing uniqueness and, and other problems. Uh, this problem uh, actually had uh, been open for a while, reason because there was no uniform, people didn't find a uniform approach uh, to handle hyperbolic part and the parabolic part for that. Only very recently, uh, there's various paper here. Uh, actually, first, uh, Okay, in 82, he found this actually some regularity of solutions. Then Carrello in 1999, uh, and those papers, uh, they first found a way to find the treat solution for isentropic case, uh, solution beyond A infinity. And we also have paper trying to think about unbounded solution at infinity for that. Uh, now the question is what about uh, any uh, and it's not, uh, and it's a tropic case, okay? What it means a general case, I explained before, uh, general AIJ, okay? So let's see, I join with Patan, uh, we first introduce a notion, new notion of kinetic solution. Then we use this notion, we find a simple way to actually prove uh, stability and the uniqueness theorem, okay? Let me explain a little bit, just several minutes. The first idea, of course, is to use the kinetic function. This kinetic function basically just one minus one zero. This in additional variable cosine, if between u and zero and one, and in this case is uh, minus one zero, basically like you can run the form in this form. Now we call the a solution is a kinetic solution, means uh, uh, you can write down equation in this form and uh, this actually chart satisfies these equations. Now, right hand side, we have two measures. This, measure, this aim measures the uh, uh, discontinuities, okay? Discontinuity of solution. The aim basically measures the parabolicity of solution, okay? So, aim you can write down basically in this form, in definition that way, okay? So, first, this is you satisfy this property, right? Uh, the second, those aim in, uh, actually, uh, it's bounded for any cosine here, and cosine goes to infinity, this goes to zero. Now, about those uh, diffusion terms, we, we somehow, this, of course, first we need this diffusion term, this divergence of beta I introduced previous slides, is L2, and uh, the second, we need this kind of this uh, product rule for that, uh, for those uh, beta and sine one and sine two for that. Now, uh, under this uh, notion, uh, we have nice property. The first one, 
is uh, L1 is a well-posed space for kinetic solution, okay? Uh, we know that if solution L1 in the microscope level cannot define solution because, for example, flux function goes faster than uh, superlinear, then if you does not make sense. So in this case, we can uh, make sense in any function L1. Uh, this uh, idea of course basically from the uh, general philosophy from fluid dynamics from since Boltzmann equation can describe Navier-Stokes equation and Euler equations. So we give a nonlinear PD, we try and find those kinetic equations for that. Now, if we can solution is uniform bound, then you return to kinetic solution return to the entropy solution. Okay, you can find it in this form. Then also you can check the existence for those initial data. And finally, I would like to point out if this isentropic case, then the fourth condition can be removed because there's a, a chain law. It's easy to check for that. Uh, then basically, the three conditions. Now, under those conditions, we can prove the solutions actually uh, L1 contraction theorem. Okay? Uh, uh, given initial data, we get solution. Different initial data, we get different solutions. Then we can prove actual solution. Oh, oh this is a typo here. Uh, basically, this is initial data I looked down. Okay, this is a typo for me. Zero uh, here. Uh, it goes to initial data and this L1 contraction properties. Okay, we use this theorem, then we first can get existence and initial data L1. You can get a unique existing and unique solution for that. And also, if initial data in are infinity, we can prove a, a solution, kinetic, any kinetic solution is an entropy solution. Okay, so this is the various thing. Now, those methods basically for, uh, uh, for a general framework, suppose we have solution, set for certain properties, then we want to study uh, the behavior of those solutions. Now, uh, next time I, I turn to the third topic, which uh, change slightly uh, the, the mathematical set, setting. Okay, in certain physical situation, actually we really want to know some specific information about solution, not only existing uniqueness and stability and other properties. For example, a, uh, like a two-phase flow problem, for example, we, we know one phase. We, so in some flows, we have two phase. There's a boundary. Then suppose we know one phase. Then the question, mathematical question, whether we can identify this uh, moving phase and the solution behind this phase, which uh, uh, is governed by certain partial differential equations. Okay? So this is kind of problem fit in general framework called wing phase free boundary problems. Can write it down in this form, can form it in this form. We have equation, then we're looking for solution. Uh, we're looking for solution which are continuous, the zero put here, and uh, uh, condition uh, clause this is like a surface, okay? Uh, we call free boundary, it gives this given uh, condition for on the surface, basically for that. Now, typical example for such kind of problem. Uh, it's a multi-dimension transonic shock. Okay. Uh, we know, it's well known, uh, the compressible inviscid uh, potential, steady potential flow, uh, flows are governed by the Euler equation, which consists of the conservation of mass, which in this form, uh, phi is the velocity potential. And the Bernoulli law, which takes this form here, now this constant could be true, uh, any const, positive constant since under scaling. Otherwise, you're just scaling, then you can make this constant. Uh, I can make this constant especially for those kind of constant. Now, from Bernoulli law, you can write down uh, the form, the density, okay, it's in this form, you can write in this form, just from here, equation you write, the algebra equation, you can this. Now, we plug in this flow into the conservation of mass, then what do you find? You got a second order equation, nonlinear equation. Okay. For phi, for the velocity potential, okay? 
So this equation actually is a mixed type. Uh, for example, granite phi at a certain point, Q, if this satisfies this property, then this is actually subsonic with this elliptic. The other side will be uh, uh, subsonic and that means the equation is hyperbolic. Okay? So this is basically a two second order nonlinear uh, equation of mixed type. Okay? Those kind of equations, okay, you can, uh, for linear model, with two well known equations, for example, maybe I just mentioned the Chokomi equation, you can write on this form, which is related with the Olap Watson W equation and the Belcham equations. And another equation, uh, Keldish equation, you put a y from this side to the, okay, you can write on this form. So there's general theorem uh, along the last century in this period for linear theorem has been well established for that. Uh, now, what about nonlinear case? Well, uh, the work for that, uh, first work by actually line, around the fifth days by Bales and Schiffman for n equal two, n equal three, Fing, Gilbert, and uh, Dong for generalized result for a multi-dimension case. They think about this problem, there's obstacle here, then you moving flow in this side, if this speed is uh, sufficient subsonic, then the question is whether you can find a global subsonic flow here, means eventually find a solution in the elliptic regime. Okay? So they succeed to do that. Now, next question is, what about this velocity uh, increase here? Uh, for, for example, close to sonic speed. Then the Marwitz in his serious paper, he, she proved that this actually there exists in general in those flaws there exist some transonic shocks for that. Okay? So what about transonic shock? Just quickly. <clears throat> well, transonic shock basically means the following. We're looking for phi. With their surface here, this subsonic, we're looking for the subsonic. There's a shock from here, set phi. Okay, here's the way of car looking for this phi in this regime, physical regime. Then we need uh, this automatic set phi entropy conditions. Uh, now, in this uh, potential flow means that basically we're looking for phi is a uh, tangential direction, actually, this. Uh, Phi tau and phi tau minus there continues for that. Okay, so means we can look for solution, continuous solutions for that. Then uh, the linking Huguenot conditions uh, implies that this algebra relation for those quantities. This means left the value at the left, the one side and the difference between the value in one side and the, and the other side. Okay, in this quantity for that. Now this you can run the algebra formula in this way, then you can draw it here. Uh, this one, you give P minus here, you can find the P plus here. Uh, this is a, is a hyperbolic regime, then a elliptic regime, you can write, easy to construct a one-dimensional transonic shock. Okay, we use this relation, but it's a unique way to find it. Okay, it giving any point uh, along the surface, uh, on the surface, uh, you, if satisfy, then we can transform it that. Okay, now, so this you can formulate the equation problem in the following form, uh, transonic shock. Uh, for example, one problem is following, first we know that the one dimension transonic shock here. Then the question of, you, we, we have stated left and the right here, uh, make this one dimension transonic shock. And now for this case, uh, if we perturb this uh, hyperbolic phase, okay, so here with the C1 alpha norm, let's say sigma, then the question, nature question, whether we can find some multidimensional transonic shock, okay, here, such that this surface uh, separate uh, the flow from this hyperbolic phase uh, from final to this. Uh, uh, elliptic phase, okay, subsonic phase for that. And we also want to identify asymptotically uh, this function goes to uh, uh, what kind of state for that. So this problem can be easy to 
they form it as the free bounded problems. Uh, that means we're looking for the surface, such that the surface C1 alpha, and the light, the domain behind the shock, which is determined by the surface, actually related with this case. And we're looking for solution, set of by the second order uh, equation of mixed type, or basic elliptic. This side, if we can prove this is subsonic, then basic elliptic equation. Then uh, this free boundary and phi satisfy the, those conditions, these jumper conditions. And also, we're looking for solution asymptotically, which one goes to whether it goes to this kind of unif unit, uniform state. Well, if I introduce a new variable u in phi minus minus phi, then this, this free boundary problem can be reduced can be reduced to the previous uh, fit in general framework of the previous uh, free bound value problems. Okay. Uh, now, for those uh, free bound value problems, uh, there are various methods, maybe I, uh, I would, or I'll quickly maybe mention the three methods. Wing method, basically the variational method, uh, by uh, Arthur Kefrelli Friedman, uh, they, they're looking for some special ABG in my framework, such that you can find a function set for those properties. Then, if uh, equation somehow special, you could fit in this variational structure, then uh, they prove that if solution is uh, absolute minimal or a stationary point of this variation problem. <laughs> So this variation problem with moving boundary <laughs> that, okay? Then you can prove as a solution the free bound problem. This is for elliptic equation, okay? Basically for all for elliptic problems. Uh, another e method related with the Pelot method, okay? By Kefrelli, uh, listen. Okay, Pelot method basically trying to use maximum principle, right? So you first introduce a family of super solution. Then you find the street uh, mineral along this U, ma, U bar. Then this is super solution, this is super solution. You, between super solution and super solution, you look, you're trying to find uh, layer solution. So here's the theorem, basically. Uh, you just solution is the minimum informal uh, for this W in the, class, in the family of this family and bigger than this uh, super solution. Then you have weak solution. The problem is this is, uh, uh, framework very general, uh, solution are not unique, okay? You different, you choose, uh, modify this class family of uh, the super solution will get a different solution somehow. Okay, so there's an example actually, there are no regular solution sometimes. But our problem, we're trying to find the solution uh, somehow C1 alpha, right? So another third method I would mention, this is a penalty method. This method works very well for basic for obstacle problems. Uh, now here, in this paper, they, they actually modified the, some problem from chemistry, uh, combustion problem, and for some, this kind of special free bounded problem. For solve those kind of free bounded problem, you just introduce some term, special term. Okay, this different operator, you add some term, beta, beta set of those properties. Okay? Now with each beta, you can find a solution, u epsilon, uh, use elliptic techniques. Okay, globally, then uh, idea is you're just trying to get, make an estimate for those kind of approximate solution, and then you uh, take a limit. Okay, you can prove uh, this is a solution. Okay, so those, those, uh, this idea uh, works very well for obstacle problem, uh, for certain with some special properties for that. Okay, the problem I show you um, before actually somehow does not fit in those framework for that. And so, uh, okay, this is basically, okay, uh, problem I mentioned before. Then, recently I joined with film and we proved following Celium. Actually, answers yes, we can solve this free bounded problem. Uh, use the mass, yeah, use the interlation method and the fixed point Celium. Okay. Uh, I, okay, one thing I may uh, also mention 
uh, some related work by Chen, uh, listing the work by Chen and Kifit, Lieberman, and Chen and Kifit's team. This consider the problem for 2D trans, uh, transonic small disturbance model for this model. And they somehow succeed to find a transonic shock, 2D transonic shock for this model. Uh, difference between this model and the other model is this one, your coefficient depend U. Here, the coefficient depend grand phi. Okay? So when you in, introduce the interaction scheme, uh, in this case, because the two equation, solution is two order regularity, got, uh, obtains two order regularity, then for free bounded problem interaction, then you got one order regularity. Here are somehow lost, uh, there's no regularity basically uh, for that. Now, another point I uh, maybe mention. In our problem now, it's still um, hyperbolic and elliptic. The two phase, one side is hyperbolic, the other side is elliptic. So we have to do something um, uh, uh, more. Uh, for example, we have to re reformulate. Okay? Basically, we know that this side is uh, hyperbolic, this side is elliptic for that. So we have to modify this equation in this form, this basically for uh, phi one here, we uh, change a little bit for that. Then we define a new law, new density function in this form. Then un under this uh, truncation process, then this equation makes this equation fully elliptic for that. Then a certain free bounded problems and so forth with the same properties. The one thing, of course, after we find a solution, we have to check this solution is belong to the regime, the original regime before truncated. <coughs> okay, this regime which before truncated for that. Okay, so this is the point. That we first make truncation, then eventually use API estimate to estimate phi actually less than uh, sonic speed. Then we'll close argument. Okay, so finally, I just uh, quickly uh, give a, a step. Uh, Proof for that. Uh, well, first solve problem basically in the bounded domain. The second then you want to get a uniform estimate. This I just cut this unbound, you cut the bounded domain. Then, this, then we make a, some estimate for this sort of uniform estimate in certain norm. Uh, then main idea of course take a limit. R goes to infinity, then you get solution okay, for that. So, uh, what about this approach? I just spent one or two minutes and I will stop here. Basic idea we use the interaction method. Uh, for example, we have free bounder, one phase free bounder really here. Now, phi zero plus some we call background solution. There's zero here, then u zero plus here for that. Some kind of background solution. They are not really solution, but close solution. Then we uh, in this approach, we introduce the a set here, C1 alpha, such that we're looking for solution close this background solution in C1 alpha norm with this M and the sigma. Okay? So this is a set of course compact in C1 beta and convex as well. Then the second, third step, we construct the interaction map, trying to find this map from this, this set into the set, okay, whether it's possible or not. Then also we should prove this mapping is uh, whether it's continuous on um, this uh, set in C1 alpha, C1 beta not for that, okay. Uh, so this uh, I just list this step. So you first start from V in Km, then you find the uh, first identify the surface, and then from this surface you introduce some. I define the map uh, in the form, in this form here. Uh, this solve elliptic equation. Now this is a fixed bound elliptic equation, okay? Uh, the, which is a co-normal problem. Then the standard elliptic problem, you can find the existence unique solution, which satisfies those properties, okay? Now this defined only in the some small domain. Then next step, we should extend this domain to whole domain. Uh, such that under this extension, this uh, 
this difference, the same alpha norm less than certain constants, constant dependency tilde are here, and there's some uh, continuity for here, okay? Uh, property I wrote down here for that. Okay, now with that, then we basically choose uh, choose this for previous m uh, in the set km, we then determine this km in this form, uh, depend on the C1 I show before, C0, C tilde, actually, the C tilde, and the sigma something small, then make an estimate. Uh, then we clearly can prove this U, this mapping belongs to the same set, and this actually continues in C1 beta. Now, uh, short fixed point theorem tells us actually this mapping has a fixed point. The original, you see, I started from free boundary, then I solved Neumann problem, but I didn't care whether the solution continues or not, okay, because we don't know. Then after this uh, estimate, then you use fixed point theorem, then this fixed point theorem guarantees the solution continues okay, for that. So then we just check this uh, solution for that. Uh, okay, then actually, Another thing we need to estimate this is the final estimate for that. Okay. Uh, with that, you, uh, we can get uh, just existence for that, for, uh, for this free, those kind of free bound problems. So uh, we believe this, uh, those kind of ideas could be useful to solve various other problems. And uh, so those methods uh, I show you basically just uh, some samples of the listing the activity uh, for those kind of the partial differential equation a, uh, are by no mean uh, ex ex exhaustive treatment of all the exciting progress uh, may have been made in listing years. Uh, I think I should stop here. Yeah, then unique, we have to prove unique separately. Separate. Yeah, use the, uh, basically use the hope of, you know, this kind of hope of argument. And then we can prove the solution unique in the, this film. Yeah. Anybody else? Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Don't have enough sound. <laughs> so, so. Uh -huh.